So, you think you know a lot about computers, do you? Well, you probably do. But if you get asked a question about the broad topic of computer systems in an exam, here's some of the things that you're going to need to know. There's a computer system. Um, it probably looks a bit like that. You may well have one at home. You'll have certainly used one in school. And a computer system comprises of input devices. Things that we use to put information into the computer. So we'd use a keyboard to type in information. We'd use a mouse to give instructions into the computer as well. Input devices. Now when once we've input data into the computer, it gets stored as different series of ones and zeros. And the storage of ones and zeros is known as something called binary. Those binary values might get stored on memory such as RAM, random access memory, which is short term memory. When we switch off a computer, everything in RAM is wiped. Or it might get stored on long term memory, such as a hard disk which lives inside the computer, or a USB data stick. Things don't get wiped off those unless we choose to delete them. That's the long term memory. Now, all of this binary is. Um, translated into useful information things that we can understand so not ones and zeros but actual words or meaningful numbers by the brains of the computer the processor and that's what a processor looks like now once it has been translated by the processor we will see it on an output device now the most commonly used output device is a monitor such as the one on your screen there but we also print stuff out and we get things like sound out of speakers as well so these are all output devices computers can join together to share resources and devices and they join together on things called networks and the network we all probably use the most is a world wide network called the internet now it's not just standard personal computers like the one we saw at the beginning of this that are computer systems any smartphones we might use or tablets such as iPads that we might use these are also computer systems if we think about it they all have input devices such as touch screen keyboards etc they have processors inside they have brains and they have output devices which is the screen or the sound that we get out of them also computer systems we see in everyday life are things like iPods, sat navs or GPS's as we might know them, or even digital television such as Sky Plus. Now we'll see computer systems in schools. We'll use systems such as VLEs, virtual learning environments, or we might know them as learning platforms in schools. We also see things like interactive whiteboards and even learner response systems such as ActiVotes. All these things get used in the classroom. So technology plays a big part in our lives in education, but also at home, our leisure lives, people's work lives, and even things like shopping rely heavily on computer systems. Computer systems need to be reliable. And we make them reliable by doing things like backing up data, so copying data from one place to another. When I worked in industry, we would have a man on a motorcycle come and collect all of our data every day from our company and take it somewhere else, just in case our offices exploded or burnt down or evaporated or whatever, our data would be saved somewhere else. And if we wanted previous versions of files, we'd have to give the man on a motorbike a ring and he'd bring our data back to us. Thanks, man on a motorbike. For computer systems to be reliable, they have to have high standards of development. So the person making them has to know what they're doing, and we have to test things thoroughly as well. You might also get asked about ethical issues when it comes to computer systems. Are we making computer systems and being kind to the environment at the same time? And when we dispose of them, we, do we recycle them? Do we dispose of them responsibly? There are laws 
that surround computer systems as well, such as the Computer Misuse Act, which makes sure that people aren't hacking into computer systems, or the Data Protection Act, which makes sure that data users, such as schools or places that you might work for, hospitals, doctor surgeries, that these places all use data responsibly, don't lose it, keep it secure, etc. So those are some of the things you might need to know about computer systems ready for an exam. You need to have a closer look at all of those areas now so you're more comfortable with them.